we didn't else. have company. All right. So bring, bring, we couldn't bring, wait to share the information until the time when we didn't have company to the show. No, I, I brought it up when uh, many driver. So what year was many driver on the show? Give or take. Probably 2013, 2014, probably 2013. It was yeah, early. So, yeah. I, that's when I first had the growth and that's when I first noticed it. And I had just gone to the doctor like a day before and they told me I had this, this growth right, and they right. told me it was a hydrocell. And I said, okay, how do you, how does that do you mean know? like a water sack? Like a, a cyst? Yeah, hydro means water. Uh -huh. So it's, 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 it was like its own sack. It builds up its own sack and it was water. So I said, okay, how do we take care of this? And they said, well, we could stick a needle in there and just drain it. It was pretty small at the time. And they said, we could just drain it, but it'll come back. And I said, okay, is there no any refill. permanent removal? And they said, yeah, it's a surgery, but we normally let these things go until it's big enough, you know, it hits a certain size, right? And once it's big enough, they go in and they remove it. But they said, you want to wait until it gets bigger. If it's not bothering you, don't worry about it and the whole thing. And it wasn't bothering me as long as I knew it wasn't cancer again, because I had just gotten through leukemia just a few years earlier. And the last thing I needed was testicular cancer. And right, they right. told me it was fine. So I let it go and it was on my mind. And I guess it was just a few days later, we were doing a show and many driver was the guest. And look, she was a bit, she was swooning and I was, you know, I was looking over the goods. No, I know that that's what I'm saying. Like she even yeah. said to you, yeah, she found you attractive. And then you're like, I got a third ball. Yeah. I was, <laughs> like, I was yeah, like, yeah, baby. That's Vinny's game right there. Like, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. When a hot, you know, a lister movie star tells you, Hey, you're, you're kind of hot. And then my answer was, I got three balls. How many guys you date with the three balls? That's right. Right. And uh, she was all over that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, women love balls. And um, so yeah, that was the story. And, and I and I think around that time, I, I gave it a name, you know, I came up with it on the show. I said, I'm, I'm calling it Guam. That's right. And the reason I'm calling it Guam, it's, you know, it's like the United States, we take care of Guam, but it's not a state, you don't get voting rights and everything. Right. But we take care of it. They don't have representation. Right. Like <clears throat> this ball. Or do, they? do they have a congressperson? No, I don't, I don't Looking know out for them. Works. You see, we have Guam and Puerto Rico and, you know, they're, they're, we take care of them, but they're not states. Right? right. So some people think there are 52 states in the union. Right. But there's only 50 and we have Guam and Puerto Rico. So at any rate, um, uh, I said, yes, it's like Guam. You know, I take care of it. I wash it. I keep it clean, just like the other two. But it doesn't have any rights. Right. It doesn't add anything to the party. So that was what that was. And um, we just started calling it Guam on the show. Right. And over the years, it got bigger and bigger, but it never bothered me. You know, even when it became bigger than the actual testicle that it was on, it just never bothered me at you all. Just, you just enjoyed having a little bulge in your pants. Yeah, the women would look at me and go, oh, he's hung like a giraffe. Look mm -hmm. at that guy, you know, hung and, like a dog. And would you announce, I've got three balls. Not Lady. all the time. Only if you were an A-list celebrity would okay. I do that. You, know, you had to be up for an Oscar at least once. Okay, that's cool. That's so, fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I mean, that's the way I roll. So since, you know, Kristen's been up for an Oscar, I did it, you know, I, I mentioned it to her. She, she's aware. Yeah, she's, yeah. So um, at any rate, <clears throat> this went on. And by the way, my voice and everything, I'm still a little sore. I'm, I'm hoarse. I just had the surgery two days ago. <laughs> and at any rate, it got bigger and bigger. And we had moved to Virginia. And it was really starting to bother me. So I started doing a search for, you know, the, the best urologist I can find in my area. And look, when you have, you know, near me, there's UVA, there's Martha Jefferson, that you know, Richmond is not far away, it's adjacent to where I live. And so you have a lot of good doctors in this area. Right. This is where anyone in Washington, if they need anything done, they, they're coming down here. Right. Congressman, you representatives, whatever, you know. There's what? But they're not going to like Bethesda Naval Hospital or Civil ah, Memorial or 
No, 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 no. Oh, well, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Just saying, I grew up there. So there, there are some pretty good hospitals. But you, as you know, there's good doctors in this area. It's, 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 Absolutely. it's kind of a hotbed for, so I started going around looking and turns out the guy that I, I chose was in Richmond, maybe 90 minutes away from where I, I live. Was it at St. Mary's hospital? No, it was a uh, VA. Urology. Was it was, oh, really? Oh, okay. I'll have to go there and do a pilgrimage. Yeah, yeah please do. And yeah. bow three times to yeah. Enrico County's, you know, birth records. Yeah, I'll do that someday soon. Okay, good. So I'll find this guy recommendations. He's one of the top guys and on and on and on. I'll mention his name, Dr. Seabury. And um, so I'll go to this guy and we get all scheduled up. And I said, okay, uh, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law are coming to town. In, in about a, a week or two. Let's do it after that. I'll come in. And as fate would have it, right around the time Kristen and Ben were getting here, COVID happened. Right. Ben, ben got stuck here. Kristen got out just in time. Right? She was able to get a flight out. And um, so that was that. But COVID happened. And you know, the last thing you want to do is have an elective surgery during COVID. Yeah. Now, when Dr. Sibi looked at it like two years earlier, he was like, Ooh, this is pretty big. This is, you know, it's already it's grown like it's grown up the stem. So you know, how your testicles hooked to a stem, basically, and it's growing up. He goes, man, you half of this thing is actually under it's in your body. It's, okay. it's gotten big. It's not just hanging down. It's grown like a like an ivy goes up an oak tree. Right? It's just growing out of control. And it got more and more uncomfortable, but with COVID and everything, I, and I, I was like, ah, I don't need to go in. I'm living with it. I'll just keep living with it. So I did. I just right. kept living with it. And, um, you know, it just got to a point where, uh, you know, one of my New Year's resolutions, and we'll talk about all my, you know, build a boat, get rid of Guam, do at least 365 hours of aerobics this year. You know, I got, you know, I do things, you know, I just, yeah. I get things done. I put them on the list, I get them done. And that was one of them. So I went in to visit Dr. Seabury again, you know, right in January, and he was able to schedule me this week. And I went in and had it taken care of. Now, it was supposed to be a 45 minute surgery. It took 90, it took double the amount of time. And when I went in for my little checkup today, because um, they had to put a drain in, he told me normally, we don't have to do a drain with this. But there may be a drain because yours is bad. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of cutting and snipping. It turns out that I didn't just have a hydrocell. I also had a spermatocell. So I had you had a third ball that wasn't a cyst. it was actually a third ball. It was three things going on. I well, I, I, I mean, it was per, if it was a spermatocell, was it producing sperm? No, I think what happens is sperm gets let like with ejaculation or something. I think sperm, I don't know the history of it. I think that happened. So I had a big chunk of that and a big water thing on top of that. It was like one on oh. top of the other. That's why the I, I was having so much pain towards mm -hmm. the end. Mm -hmm. um, so they they took that off. Right before I went into surgery, I cannot remember the woman's name, Anna, and she's going to probably hear this podcast. So, um, you know, you know how when you go in for surgery now, everyone has to come and meet you to let you know who it's like, hi, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the, 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 the doctor, da, 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 I'm the anesthetist, I'm going to be the guy knocking you out. I understand you get nauseous, we're going to put some anti nausea stuff in the thing, we're going to give you some afterwards and you get, you're never going to get nauseous we're going to take care of you. And then the head nurse comes in, I'm the nurse who does the blah, blah, blah. And then the nurse, the nurse anesthetist comes in. So she comes in, and she goes, uh, I've been told by the anesthetist that you have nausea and the whole thing. These are the drugs, you know, they're, they're very That's good. That's good that they're stuff. on it. Yeah. And when she's on her way, don't out, take off the wrong ball, folks. Yeah. Oh, they make that. That's the other thing they, they do. draw on it, don't they? No, they didn't draw on it, but they said, what are we doing to you today? I said, you're yeah. removing a hydrocell. And they said, from where? And I said, my testicle. They said, which one? The right one. They said, point to it. They they literally, it's like, yeah. 
You can't miss it. It's the one that's 10 times bigger than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still when you're under. Yeah, they, they, they you make don't want them to mess you know, it up. And by the way, when you're saying that they're checking it off of a list, you know, there's all yeah. these checklists and all things. Which is good. Yeah, that's what happened when I had the lumpectomies. They they're like point to where it is. Yeah, they were like draw on my boob. Yeah, they, they, they make yeah. you point to it. And, yeah. um, and then the nurse anesthetist, um, she when she's leaving, she goes, um, she's getting she stands up, she goes, by the way, love the podcast. <laughs> Tell them. No. Yeah. I'm, and so I wish I can remember her name, Anna. I, they knocked me out. I woke up. I couldn't remember it. So nurse anesthetist. Hello. If you, hello, <laughs> sweetheart. That was so nice. And I said hi to Anna for you. And and by the way, oh, that's right. You tweeted me that. And I was like, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I didn't believe you. No, it was it was a real thing. And here's the thing. R right after she did that, I went, oh, no. She's a fan and she's going to be looking at my junk. <laughs> she doesn't care. She's a medical professional. I know she's been doing this her whole life. She's been looking at junk and, and the whole thing. So, um, at any she should, rate, have, she should have told you that afterwards. I didn't need to know it at all, to be honest, <laughs> you know, but, um, and then the other thing was I never told Marie, you know, because I don't like to worry my parents. You didn't, she didn't know at all. No, no, I, I don't worry them with anything. Yeah, they're, they're, I get they're, it. they're trying to stay alive themselves. I don't tell you know? my parents anything. I get look, it. I, I, when I had cancer, they told me, look, you got a 50 50 chance. I called them and told them I had the common cold of cancer. Right. The doctor said that, you know, because they, they don't need to hear yeah. how bad it is. And I remember I would only call them on days when I could be propped up enough and get enough voice because they can hear my voice. Right. So I would drink a lot of water and get myself propped up and, you know, walk around a little bit, try to get myself whenever I call them during cancer. Yeah. You know, I try to sound as good as I could. And um, I, I think that's good off. anyway, because not only do you not want to worry people, I don't know. I know you you need support and stuff, but I'm also like there are certain people that and not your parents at all. I'm not saying your parents, but like what George is going through, like don't tell everybody because then people make it about them and they're, Oh, well, you're going to be dead soon. <laughs> or like they say weird things. And sometimes it's just best to just yeah, not yeah. go there with everybody. So I get that. So, I yeah. You know, and then of course my life is on Facebook. Right. So my mom calls me, did you have a surgery? And I'm like, oh yeah. My God. And, and of course, Wait, you didn't put that you had a surgery on Facebook, right? Or well, she saw it, that people were talking about it. She saw they were talking about it. They, they you get don't even go to Facebook. I never go to Facebook. I don't put anything on Facebook. Remember, we were trying to get in your Facebook account so we could do a live because we, we couldn't, couldn't get the YouTube yeah. live to work. And then we just wanted to be Instagram. We, and, and we people, couldn't get into your Facebook. Yeah, I, I have no idea how to get in there. And um, so, yeah, uh, they learned about it it on Facebook and then of course got very concerned and I had to explain to him it was nothing. And now they've called me every day, which is sweet, you know, it's, it's very kind. They're very nice people. And um, there you have it. Hey, did our guest write back to you yet, Anna? Yeah, she did. Oh, good. She's cool. Um, with it. My new girlfriend. Yeah. You you've manifested this new girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. But she's younger and cute. Anna, when you see her. <laughs> So I've cute. seen I've watched a billion of her YouTube videos. She's absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Her name is Rena Aluwalia. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me how I got that name out. Aluwalia. I got to do everything phonetically. It's just mm -hmm. the way it is. So, By the way, um, I don't do everything phonetically. And when I was at NBC for at doing Late Show, they would write it out phonetically and it drove me nuts because I was like, what is this? Just say what the person's name. Like, I am not phonetic. I have to right. see it and say it in my head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that oh, drives yeah. me nuts. So if I were to read your thing, I'd be like, what did you write? But Aluwalia, when you read it, if you don't even hyphen it, it's spelled out for you. Aluwalia. You know, when, when I when I saw it, I heard you saying it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have pronounced it correctly if I hadn't heard you in my head saying it. But once I've said it, I've committed that spelling to memory and how to say it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? By the and way, folks, don't expect strange. a whole lot of heavy lifting today. 
because um, I'm two days out of surgery. And I've been on the phone, you know, because there were two days when I didn't take phone calls. Yeah. I did back to backs all day today, I had to go and get my I, I had a drain. So yeah. while so here's my day, I had to wake up this morning, do phone calls while I drove back to Richmond, go see the doctor have him pull the drain out of my scrotum. Have him block that up, get back in the car, take phone calls all the way back. There's going to be light lifting today. So um, yeah, yeah. you might want to tune in on the next show to get a little heavier lifting going on. You know what I propose we do on the next Monday show is NSNG on a budget. We haven't done that yeah. in a while. And that could be a whole show. Yeah, it's got to be a whole show. And um, it, it, because we, again, so many new people writing to me, the phone calls, half the phone calls I did today were micro people. Yeah. And um, they I've are been getting a ton of questions. Yep. Yeah. And people are into it and everyone's doing it. Um, Anna. Yeah. I don't know if this is political or not. Let's uh -oh. not make it political, but I'll bring it up. Ruh -ruh. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's political, but I haven't said anything about it so far. I'm happy about it. Um, but uh, what's his name with the SpaceX? Um, Elon, oh, Elon Musk. Musk. He bought Buying Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good thing because guys like me, because as you know, I've been shadow banned and blocked and, you know, they won't give me a check mark and they, yeah. you know, this is good for us. Right. I know some people are out there going, this is horrible. He's a horrible person. I, I don't know. I try not to, and, I try not to dive too much into that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I will say, I feel like everything's been splintered and, not only can you and I not get the message out, I can't even get an email to people like, here's a recipe. <laughs> like, right. I feel like I'm doing the most benign end of the heavy lifting that you're doing, and I can't get a message out. So if this helps, then great. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, people like us have been shadow banned. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's right. I, I, yeah, I really don't think it's right. You know, no. um, it, you know, the fact that they, you know, this other guy, Jack, whatever his name is, was Jack you know, Dorsey controlling messages and all you hear other stuff. And normally I would go, oh, hogwash. But, you know, when they come for you, which right. they came for me and I'm just a guy giving people information on being healthy. Uh, uh, what am I doing? Right. Who am I? <laughs> right. I know I couldn't agree more. And uh, here we are. So, um. By the way, Anna, um, yeah. because of, um, you know, I, I, I've i been doing perfect diet, like super perfect because I yeah. had surgery. Mm -hmm. I think that's why they were able to take the thing out. It, you know, he told me it might be four or five days. And I was like, man, this thing is quicker. not dripping anymore. And um, but the, the day of surgery, you know, I noticed my ankles were swollen like th there was um. I guess from the drugs they give you, whatever it causes uh -oh. inflammation. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I noticed my hands were a little swollen. You could tell that they've come down. They, they look normal mm -hmm. now. Uh, my ankles were swollen and the whole thing. Now today I'm peeing every ten minutes. So getting it out of your system. At some point, I'm gonna have to go pee, and you and and my girlfriend are gonna have to chat it out. You don't think they didn't give you like glucose and an IV or anything, did they? I don't think so. Okay. You, there was probably, know. honestly, they'll probably give you some steroidal type of things. And then once oh, you get yeah. that out, that make, that will make you swell. And then once you get that out, you basically pee it out and it takes a little while to. Yeah. But that, peeing that like, like it started last night, yeah. man. It was like all, all of a sudden I'm peeing and peeing and peeing and well, can't stop. And it went right before we started this podcast. And I know I'm going to have to go again before it's over with. Well, do you uh, want to go now? No, because here's, we here's what I was going to say. Go is on. if if you want to bring this back to health and fitness, people don't understand just how inflamed they are and mm -hmm. they do NSNG and they feel better. Sure. Like the headaches go away or like the achy joints or when I get out of bed in the morning, my feet don't hurt when I step on them or whatever. Right. You know, people have have avoided surgeries that they needed to have for back pain or whatever. You go to the groups. You'll see all this this uh, anecdotal details about how things have helped people, the non scale victories. And something that you don't think about is whenever you have to prep for surgery, or let's say you cut your finger or whatever, you will heal faster if you're not inflamed. 
And if you're about to have any sort of surgery at all, anything invasive, I would be the strictest NSNG meat and vegetables. Not, I wouldn't even do dairy and nuts. I would just be super strict <laughs> because you will heal faster. And the, the, the story I always tell is when I, I had a lumpectomy in 2008, when I was standard American diet, and it was even done by a plastics guy. So you really can't tell other than teeny tiny little scars about it. And um, I was in so much pain in recovery. And then in 2015, after doing NSNG for a couple of years, I went to an audition that afternoon. I had another lumpectomy and I went to an audition. Yeah, I uh, went. I was like, okay, no, I'm fine. I mean, Lauren drove me. I didn't drive that day, but I was fine. I was bundled up and I had actually worse scars from that because it wasn't done by a plastics guy. And, um, nope. Yeah. I, and look, I they, they really gave quickly. Me, they so. gave me 10 painkillers, you know, like the, the super duper, the, right. the heavy need stuff. Need they haven't taken one. No. Um, now listen, I'm in pain. I, I'm not, you know, I'm sore. It's sore, sure. but it is not unbearable to where I can't sleep or relax. You know, when I it, actually, when I'm sitting, I can't even feel it. When I stand up, I'll feel it. Right. So it's that's going on. Um, but yeah, you know, I had that big time surgery on my shoulder where I did the Riemann run. And they tell you, yeah. you're gonna be on painkillers for weeks, if not months, some people go months with painkillers on that. And I took a few painkillers, but on day, what was it 10? You were done. Day nine or 10. I was taking literally one a day just to go to sleep. And I was you know, I could have taken as many as four or five a day. I was well, taking one just to go to surgery. Sleep oh, yeah. It, it, they literally drill a new joint. It, they, they take a reaming device and, and grind into your bone and, um, and then put a piece of steel up against it. And they told me, you're going to be on painkillers for, for weeks, if not months. And I watched other videos of people. And no, I was off, you know, one to sleep at night. And that went on for you know, 10 nights on the 11th night, I took a Tylenol. That was the last time I took a Tylenol. I guess that was back in 2015 or 16, whenever I had that. And um, that was the last anything I took. Because when you keep your inflammation down, when you're not eating sugars and grains, when you're not eating seed oils, when you're not eating junk, you can be healthy. Now, let me give you the antithesis of that. Um, <clears throat> I was uh, in uh, Ohio with Andy Schreiber. And uh, we were at some event, I can't remember exactly what it was. But, you know, when you're in Ohio, you know, you, the only thing you could get wherever we was is you get off of an exit and there's what, uh, you, you get off of an exit. And there's like an Applebee's and a Chili's and you know, there's nothing, there's no right. place that I would go into. Yeah, period. So we're there for a couple of days, and I'm running out of stuff to, to eat. <clears throat> so there was a red lobster. And I went, okay, there's lobster in the name. Therefore, they must have. Uh -huh. lobster. So we went in and sure enough, that you could get the frozen lobster tail. And that was pretty cheap. Or you could get the the live Maine lobster is very expensive, but I wanted to get a nice big chunk of protein. And I said, okay, I'll take the biggest lobster you have there and um, bring me, uh, and, and I said, what can, and they said, broccoli. I said, yeah, that's good. And I said, you know what? Um, bring a lot of butter, a lot of drawn yeah. butter. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to get some fat with my protein because that was gonna be the best meal I was gonna have. So I'm there you know, you know, just scooping up the, all the drawn butter I could. And I'm even dipping my broccoli in it. Right? Well, that night, you know, I just started, you know, I, the inflammation just came on, you know, I've broken everything in my body through sports. All of a sudden, it's two in the morning, and I'm wrestling with pain, right? Because I'm not used to And I'm like, what did I eat? What did I have? I, all I had was a lobster and butter. I'm not and, 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 and what, did I, what, 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 I couldn't figure it out. And I got out of bed, I was in this hotel, I got out of bed at like two, three in the morning. You know, the story I went down and got yeah. on the treadmill and just walked for like two hours. Until, you know, I started to feel better. I just walked on a treadmill very slowly. 
and why it's overnight news, you know, like a streaming news thing. Went back to bed, maybe slept for an hour or two and had to go back to this convention. And this guy, Davey, do you know Davey Robinson? Yeah. Okay, a big fan of the yeah, I met him in Vegas. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's a super cool guy. The guy's done incredible with NSNG and all thing. He heard me tell the story and he goes, Oh, I used to work in a restaurant when I was a kid. Or maybe as an adult, I'm not really sure he goes, you didn't have butter. That was a product called Whirl, W H I R L, which by the way, I had never heard of until you brought this up. And it's everywhere. Yeah, it's an industrial. They call it butter. Yeah. Which, by it, the way, they shouldn't be able to call it butter. There's no but butter. They can. In. No. It's whipped seed oil, right? Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, it, it's a chemical. And if you could pull it up, it would be, it would be great I if you find. could pull it up. Um, it's just incredible as to what it is, right? And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's liquid vegetable oil with butter flavoring. Yeah. <laughs> you're in a restaurant in and you, four ask, liter bottles. you ask for butter and this is what they give you they didn't give me butter they gave me five percent lower saturated fat well i don't give a shit about that it's an industrial oil this is something folks you can use to oil machinery i'm not being funny right now and yeah, that's you don't want had, to put this in your body no it had me so because I, I keep my body so clean from this kind of crap it had me so jacked up that I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep. Vinny, we went to a restaurant because, you know, we're trying to meet people in our new place, right? Yeah. And so they were like, come to this dinner where we put people together and, and it's like this guy loves to meet people. And he's great. He's a nice guy. He's the UPS driver. That's how we met him. <laughs> and he puts these dinners together. So we go down the street to this restaurant and I don't want to say the name of the restaurant because I don't want to hurt anybody's business. But it's you know how we eat and how I eat at home and only use Villa Capelli coconut oil, real butter. Right. And then sometimes a uh, lard or beef tallow when it's around. It's not very complicated. People always ask, what fats do I cook with? I'm like, that's it. You probably already have them. Yeah. Not seed oils, not whirl. And so I ordered what I thought was safe, which is a piece of, it was an Italian restaurant, but it's one of those Italian restaurants that had the same menu since 1984. So I got the, the grilled salmon with the spinach and then it came with carrots and potatoes, but I don't eat carrots and potatoes. And uh, it had some, a little red sauce over the top. Fine. So I ate the salmon, the red sauce that had a couple little cherry tomatoes and some, the spinach. Fine. It wasn't good. It was fine, but yeah. it was, you know, and didn't have a great time at this dinner anyway. And so, and so I was like, oh, whatever. But you didn't have a good time because you didn't like the people you were with or it was like one of those things where like it's like a blind date for couples. It's four couples and two of them we really liked and we wanted to just talk to them. You know what I mean? And the other two no. were like this one lady here, here. Let me give you an example. And literally her name was Karen. I'm not kidding you. She was sitting like this right across from me. Just like like she had this like what, what was wrong with her? I don't know. And so I was like, hi, I'm Anna. And she was like, and then this, I go, hi, I'm Anna. And she goes, hi, I, I'm, I'm Anna. It's nice to meet you. And she goes, no, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And then I go, what's your name? After three times trying to introduce myself where you would go, oh, hi, Anna, I'm Karen. Nice to meet you. That's what a normal person would do. Yeah. And she goes, Karen. And I was like, Karen, it's great to meet you. Like, it was just, it was just so weird. And then she just did that the whole night sitting across from me. Anyway, it, it, luckily they moved it along. Long story short, it was, it was not fun dinner company, nor was it a great meal. And so we were very glad for it to be over with. No, wait, and Anna, we realized wait, this is wait, not wait, the way I, we're going to make I'm, new I'm friends. Missing, I'm missing something. I can't, I don't want to get into detail in case people are listening to the Okay, podcast. Anna, you went out with, you went out with two couples. Four, three other couples. So it was eight people. And one. And it was uh, recommended by a friend who we do like going, oh, you should go out with this person. He sets up these dinners. It's really fun. You'll meet some people. And I was like, great. And, and, and one, honestly, and Vinny, you and I are the same. And Lauren's the same. Like, we don't like to do these things. And so it was big, it was a big deal to get out of my comfort zone and like go and like meet with strangers because yeah. I have to be on all day long. 
So I want to just, you know, hide in a hole <laughs> for the rest of the time. You know this. You're the same way. Yeah. And but we did it. We're like, you know what? We have to try new things. We really have to do this. We've got to try new things. And I'm telling you, this woman who sat across, I, I found out she's a dog trainer and she raises border collies. Oh my God, I love dogs. How, it seems like we should just have a sparkling conversation, right, Vin? Yeah. And so I was like, hey, Karen, so you raise border. I've seen a lot of border collies here in the valley. Is that because of your breeds? And she was like, no. <laughs> okay. So okay. Is it fun to breed dogs? Train them? Like, I was like, give me something, Karen. Give me something. Anyway, I go home and I notice I'm starting to feel that achiness. And then I realized because it was a really greasy plate of food. And this Italian resto did not oh. use olive oil. There's no way. I got so sick. You got seed oil. Triggered the autoimmune. Thing. Got achy hands and achy feet for two. It took about a couple of days. I took a bunch of ultra salt and drank water to get this right. stuff flushed out right. of my system. But I was so irritated because it was just an irritating experience altogether. <laughs> And then I got sick afterwards. I was like, screw this. Anna, I am not making friends. Was her name really Karen? Yes. A thousand percent <laughs> Karen. Oh, God. All right. You know, can, can I say, can I do something cryptic? Because I know people in my neighborhood are listening. Can, can I, can I talk? Can, sure. Joan Rivers, can we talk? Can we talk? <laughs> so, can we talk? So we move into this neighborhood, right? And um, we don't know anyone. We meet the neighbors. They're super nice. You know, they got four kids. As a matter of fact, there's a couple of neighbors. We, you know, there's another family on the street. They have kids. And the only reason we know the people with kids is because we went around to those people and said, hey, we have a pool that we ain't using. You got right, right. kids. And boy, kids love to swim. So if, if you guys come over whenever you want, as long as you're with the kids, Use your pool like it's it's your use our pool like it's yours, period. Right. Uh oh. <laughs> do you know that, what? Do you know the term Mrs. Kravitz? Yes, Gladys Kravitz, the nosy yeah. neighbor who peeks through the blinds. Yeah, and knows everything that's going. She's the busy body of the neighborhood. Right. Okay. We we have a neighborhood of Mrs. Kravitzes, and. You they, need to come here and we can compare Virginia Kravitz to, uh, the, to the horse country cattle Kravitzes. They, they, these women get together and they have wine. I think it's once a week. And they, they, they talk about everybody who's not there. As a matter of fact, my of understanding course. is that if you're, if you're the one that's not there, you're being talked about that week. So, you know, so. If you don't want to be talked about, you better show up to Wine Wednesday. Marina and I, you know, we work from home. So we don't have time to go kibitz and have wine and do, do whatever. And the, he, here, let me just throw this out here to whoever might be listening from my neighborhood. <clears throat> We're getting every bit of information <laughs> that you guys are saying about us. Oh, We're hearing it. So don't think you guys are the only one with your little coconut telegraph going on. The information ends up in my ears, bitches. So just know that. Oh, there's a scandal happening in Virginia. And by the way, they, they got just about everything about us wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Just about everything. I was like, <laughs> I'm like sitting there going, are you guys for real? Well, th that was why when we were at this dinner, they kept saying, Wait, hang on, this hang on, guy kept hang on. saying you're retired to Lauren. Yeah, we're going to keep that short because Bill asked me not to put anything in the shows. Yeah, but. that's going to get you need to bring Rena on. But yeah, the, the whole time they could. So you're retired to Lauren and Lauren's like, how old do you think I am? I'm not retired. I'm still very much working. And I go, well, maybe they think you're rich, honey. He's like, there's no way they think I'm rich. I was like, you're right. I, I've, I've heard things about us. And, it, and, and no one's got they say? I want to know. No one's gotten anything right yet. I'll tell you off the air. Well, at least they at least they're talking about you. They would they had nobody at this dinner had any interest in asking anything. I just and I just kept asking questions and they would give one word answers and then turn away and talk to somebody else. I was like, why are we here? So we got to talk off the air. Would I know who these people I are? Know. No, 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 no. You wouldn't at all. No, 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 no. These were the literally it's like our UPS driver organizes these things. And he used to do these big like 
1500 person events before COVID, which I'm like, that to me would make me have an anxiety attack. Like I can't, I'm not going to that. Yeah. But I'll do a dinner with, I can, I'm a scintillating conversationalist. I love talking to people and getting to know them, but you have to like respond when I ask you a question, like 101. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, No, it's, um, it's odd. You know, LA is even crazier than here, you know, and you're not even in LA anymore. You're in, you're in double crazy country now. Yeah. Because people basically go up there to retire, right? Yeah, it is. It is a lot of uh, retired folks and they're not very happy about the L.A. people coming to town, buying up the real estate and driving. I think they would like it because then they can cash out when they're ready to cash out. They, they got good price. Anyway, this is not exciting. Get get Rena on. I, I, I sent out to her. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, OK. Oh, we're waiting for her to. Um, uh, is she write back to you and say she's ready or anything or. No, she just said, OK, thanks, Anna, about a half an hour ago. She'll be here. OK, we'll see. I hear, let me write her. Um, uh, Vinny sent the link. Do you see it? Sorry. Vinny I thinks he sent the link. Oh, yeah, I should write that. Vinny thinks. Um, Rena's uh, YouTube is amazing. Have you watched is it? Really? Her no, I haven't. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about it. I am a new subscriber. Yeah, I think she said that she came about all this because she was inspired by us. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Or something like that. I could she'll she'll tell us. Great. I can't wait to talk to her. Yeah. We're, Maybe we're, could we're, I invite her to the to the zoom? You guys it's called producing on the fly. I, I don't know. Participants. Well, let's see. Well, invite. Anna, Anna, copy invite link. I'm going to try it. See if she Oh, oh there she is. Never oh, mind. Good. Here, here we go. Yay. Let's see if she pops up here. Uh, Rena, can you hear us? Uh, there you go. There she is. Hello. Hello. Let me just make sure that my mic, everything is good. You yeah, sound amazing. Usually, usually I royally stuff that up. <laughs> You sound fantastic and you look fantastic. It's great to see your face. I love your YouTube channel. Huge fan. Just putting that out there. Yeah. Thanks. Before Anytime that anyone. Oh, hi, Vinny, by the way. Hi, do. hi, Vinny. Yeah. I can um, leave worry about him. And you guys just talk and I can leave. Is that mm -hmm. Anytime that I hear that, I'm like, really? Shit. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, someone's watching? Yeah. Well, that's the thing, because like I think that when we do our own stuff, then we are our greatest critic and then we just think, oh, it's all right, average. But then you really try and then, you know, you try to make a difference. But when somebody else says it, especially somebody like you, Anna, I'm like, oh, my God, she likes my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Thank Anna's you. a big deal. Uh, Anna, tell me about uh, Rena's um, YouTube channel. What, what's on there? Well, here's what I like. She keeps it real. She what? So. Rina, tell me, it, by the way, Vinny doesn't always pronounce people's names correctly. Do you say Rina or Rina? Rina. Rina. OK, just making sure. So then, um, half, half. <laughs> With a, Vinny, he says Rina and then he says Rina. That's OK. But he says Rinner, too. Yeah. Rinner. Rinner. Oh, okay. I, I, I go back and forth. Which is I super have British. Girl, you say I Rinner. Lois and Lana. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> she doesn't okay. need to know about my other girlfriend, does she? It's being a guy. It's all right. Being a guy. That's Can't okay. help it. Like, but here's what I like about your channel. You're talking yeah. about carnivore. You're talking about the journey you're on. You talk about your mom and having those conversations, trying to help her out. I really like that because it feels very real. My mom, before she passed, thought everything we were doing was insane. Yeah. And, you know, I don't blame her because it's yeah. been that way. And for a lot of our audience, we have a lot of new people because Vinny was on the Mike Rowe podcast. And I'm here to tell people it's it can seem weird to people what we're doing they can and you can get a lot of flack and a lot of like yeah flack. exactly but it sounds like you have this approach of sharing and just like you share the information then if people get on board yeah. then you have even more information which i like that there, there's a new term that i either coined or maybe it's out there but i made up it's called edutainment so I'm not here to educate people on this is how it is. This is like what you need to do because there's plenty of doctors out there. I'm not a doctor, but what I can do is just show people what I'm doing. Cause I've been on a journey. I've done all the wrong shit. I'm not going <laughs> to swear, but by the way, I have done seriously over, 
I guess, you know, 40 years, I've done all, not the wrong things, but I mean, so as I say on my channel, it's not about um, mistakes, it's about learnings, because everything that you do in life is an experience, and it's your choice to grow and to change based on those experiences. So we all have a choice. So basically, I did a lot of the, you know, a lot of learnings. And where I've arrived today is I'm still learning, you know, maybe carnival is not the right thing. Maybe NSNG is not the right thing. So I'm open. Um, right. And then when you close your mind to say, like, this is how it is, and this is, you know, how life is, or this is what the truth is, then you're close to life. So that's what I'm sharing. Yeah. I love it. Thanks. I love it. Thanks. No, it it's good. And I love that, you know, you know, a younger generation is coming into this because, you know, she just mentioned, I had no idea how old you were. You're 40. I'm, um, I'm well, 60. 40 next year, but I just say the big 40 because it's like, oh, but I'm really like 39. Yeah, I'm really 39. I'm, I'm, I'm really yeah. 59. And Anna is 49 or 50? I'm, I'm 48. I'll be 49 in, in like a week. But I will say I'm 50 because I'm just like, why don't just say it? It's marketing. Yeah, but we need we need more. It people. is. If you say that you're old, like the big 40, like even you to say that you're 50, I'm like, damn, your skin's really good. So you have these ideas in your mind. We do. We have preconceived notions, but I think that they're also based on, you know, genetics and the people that we grew up with looking yeah. at how maybe the standard American diet, like my mom, for example, wasn't diagnosed with her celiac until she was 58. So she's had, she had 58 years of damage or whenever the celiac set in with her of yeah. damage, and that's going to also damage your skin. And exactly it, wherever you're weakest is where it, shit's going to hit the fan. So even my dad, uh, he got here. diagnosed with FTD, frontal temporal dementia. So mm. that came out of nowhere and he's declining really fast. So even for me, no, it's hard. Like all these things that like, even with your mom, it comes out of nowhere and it gives you a real shock and a real why to actually think, you know what? My life is not the same forever. Things can change. Shit happens. So, yeah. Yeah. And the brain stuff is serious, serious. Yeah, like it was his just birth. now coming out with all that having to do prob probably with inflammation and overconsumption of processed. How old is your dad, Rihanna? Well, funny you say that he just turned 69 two days ago. And uh, is he in a great decline or, or what, what's going on? Um, makes me a bit emotional. Yes. Um, so even like when I saw him, um, you know, he's not, he can still hear and understand you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, physically, he's just not there. And, um, you know, not entirely there. And when he wants to communicate, um, he can't really articulate his words. So if he wants to say yes, he says no. If he wants to say no, he says yes, I say, hi, dad, he says hi, dad, you know, so all these things. Right. And I guess that when you look at your father and you identify with your father, it's hard. It's that emotional shift that you have to make with like, wow, okay, my father is now the child. And yes. I'm so grateful my stepmom is unbelievably supportive and unconditional love to my dad beyond my wildest and my sister and I's wildest dreams. But that's a reality of life where who knew that was going to happen? Right. You, you just don't know, you know, we, we were talking yeah. earlier today, you know, I, I just had a tiny surgery that nothing like this, but you start realizing that you go through life, and things, you know, things happen, and you have to be ready for them. You know, I had a buddy who tripped on stairs uh, six weeks ago, five weeks ago, and missed everything went right down on his head. The, the fact that he's not a, a quadriplegic Oh my gosh. No doctor can understand it. He crushed three vertebrae in his neck and three in his thoracic area because his head bent forward as it, he nothing hit but his head. Mm. <clears throat> and it not his breath was knocked out for a long time, you know, for like minutes. And they couldn't even get him going with that. And they got him to the hospital. And um, the fact that he's still alive, and you think about that and you go, well, if Jimmy wasn't in great shape to begin with, he he wouldn't have made it. Because he ended up having to go back for another surgery, you know, I had to put pins and, and everything in his neck. And then it was infection and the whole thing. And you have to be healthy to begin with, right? 
we, we look at the yeah. people who died during COVID. And yes, folks, I get it. Some very healthy people died. But the majority of people who died were either old, which is a comorbidity in and of itself, or morbidly obese, which is a comorbidity. And or pre-existing immune conditions. Yeah, of course. And, and, and exposes you know, them to the threats of COVID. And you look at that and you go, not as many people had to die from that. You know, over the years, we've had other things that they were calling pandemics. There, there was Asian flu, bird flu, swine flu, you name it. Everybody was fine. This time something comes around and it's obliterating people. So what's different now? What's different now? What's happening now that wasn't happening with all the other pandemics we were supposed to have as, as I was growing up, because every year they were talking about something coming out of somewhere in Asia or India. But here we are, right? I tell you like what it could be. Well, I think what it is, it's media. And it's this idea that when you're so singularly focused on what's happening in your present moment, this is the only thing that's happened. And in past history, oh, nothing like this has happened previously. But even a hundred years ago, the Spanish flu happened and actually wiped out more people than what COVID did. Right. So these are the things that even from our economic point of view, we can't even from my generation, we've never seen a we've never seen a proper recession. But I tell you what, you speak to people in the 30s, you speak to right. people going through World War One, World War Two, and their experiences are going to be so different to what's happening today. And we and right now, even Vinny and I spoke about last week about instant gratification. We're in this instant gratification world where everything's coming quick, 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 quick. And all we can focus on is, you know, COVID. Yes, it's un unbelievably impactful to our world and especially what it's done in terms of health, in terms of change, in terms of uncertainty. But it's no different to what's happened previously. Right. And you know, we talk, you're right, we did talk a lot on, on Rena's show about Rena. What did I just call <laughs> you? R Rena. Rena. But it's Rena. Rena. Like, like think of our like if you don't say it correctly, you'll have renal failure. Okay. Okay. It's Rena. R I N A, but think of it as R E E N A. Okay, Rena. I could say Al Aluwalia because I've been practicing that one. Then um, you need to practice Rena. <laughs> okay, I'm working on it. You see, she's so bossy. I know, I love it. Yeah. Well, that's being your new <laughs> girlfriend, you know. That's yeah. What happens. And that's what happens, right, that's you true. know. That's I true. Need to call Lois. You, you, you um, give up a bit of autonomy. So, you know, we were talking about, you know, this instant gratification. And, you know, it's little things, you know, like what I was talking about earlier. You know, at the beginning of the year, everyone sets up the, these uh, New Year's resolutions. And by the 15th of the month of January, they're done. Right. Oh, I tried it for a while. It didn't work. And it's always important, you know, to set up several things and then see them through. No matter how stupid they are, you have to see it through because it makes you exercise that part of your being. You know, for me, it was the 365 days of aerobics. Right. Yeah. So I don't have to do it every day. But at the end of the year, I have to have at least 365 hours of aerobics. Right. By the end of the year, I have to have a kayak built. By the end of the year, I have to have the surgery done because, you know, we could just keep kicking cans down the street and we can just, you know, we can all, you know, I don't even need a credit card anymore. Anything I need on, on Amazon, you just go bop, 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 and there it is, it shows up. I don't want to live in that world where I could think of something and then it shows up at my doorstep. That scares me. That scares yeah. me in ways and you'll go, oh, come on, Vin. Oh, come on. No, but it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And it's happening. You know, people, when I talk to people in the consults, I did five consults today, right? I'm here. I should be resting from a surgery. I had five consults. I had six. I had to put one off until tomorrow because I had overbooked. And the common thing is people that I had... You know, one woman said, I only have 20 almonds. It's like, stop counting almonds. What are you doing counting almonds? I don't want you counting nuts. Can no, I just what, chime in to say, diet mentality. If, you, know, if stop. you got fat because of you ate 21 almonds instead of 20 almonds, please message us because we need to interview you. Because yeah, that yeah. that's literally never happened to my knowledge. But do you yes. understand, you know, what we're doing with, you know, we're, we're so micromanaging ourselves and we want this instant thing and we want it now. And, 
And when people call me and they go, I'm doing your program. I don't have a program. NSNG yeah. is not a program. It's, it, it's, I've been saying, Anna, for how long? 11 years, 10 years? 11 years, yep. It, it's just a lifestyle. It's just a lifestyle. Is it a sugar? Is it a grain? And now is it a seed oil? If it is, don't eat it. Right? And then there's nuances. There's potatoes and what have you. You keep those out too. But, but you're not going to get fat from eating a potato. Right. One potato. Like you probably one, shouldn't right, have right. it, right? But you're right. not going to get fat, morbidly obese, diabetic, metabolic syndrome from eating one potato. Exactly. But if you have all of those things, it's probably better to stay away from a potato. Right. Yeah. So, but, you know, we live in this, this world, everybody wants, especially people actually younger than you, the, the 25 to 35 year olds, they, they, right now, they want to know exactly what's the perfect thing. And guess what's not perfect life, life is not perfect. It never will be ever. And that's yeah. a problem. Because everyone's trying to make it perfect. So yeah. Rena, I want to hear a little more about your origin story. Like what yes. brought you to where you are today with with the food, your food journey and experimentation? Um, yeah, so okay, it was a long story. And when I spoke to other people, I thought, geez, I better condense it because people don't, <laughs> don't listen. No, honestly, I like to tell you every single detail because it's really important. But people just don't listen. So I'll try to condense it and make it quick. So basically, um, I grew up in a very dysfunctional childhood. And even Vinny and I, and, and I spoke about trauma. And a lot of people go through trauma, dysfunction, like even Vinny had a, um, a speech impediment and, and he got teased. Mm -hmm. So there's small things and there's big things that can really affect your life. For me, my parents separated uh, when I was seven. I saw my dad one day and I said, Dad, uh, where are you going? He said, I have to leave. And that was the, t the last memory that I have of my childhood. I I've blocked out all of my childhood. Um, and... Um, so I'm also writing a book. So when I write the book, it brings back all these memories. By the way, if you cry, I'm going to cry with you. No, <laughs> so you no, know. no, no, it's okay. No, I I'm wake just up telling you, I can't, no, I when someone up. else cries, I start, I, I won't cry <laughs> on my own, but if you cry, I'm going to cry with you. Do no, it. I'm a strong you. person, but when you, uh, when you rediscover your childhood, um, it brings up a lot of things that you never that you think that you've dealt with, but you haven't dealt with. And I always try to say like, you know, it's not a, it's not a big deal. Everyone goes through it. Every, right. a lot of people go through dysfunction. A lot of people go through teasing. A lot of people go through bullying and it affects their life. So that's what happened to me in terms of my childhood. My parents divorced. Um, I had emotional abuse, verbal ab abuse, um, some physical abuse, and then later on some sexual abuse. Uh. And then um, through my teens, I I realized I didn't have, get any love from my family because uh, my dad wasn't there. My mom would go away with her partner and then I was left alone uh, with my sister. And she would, um, I hope she doesn't watch this because she gets really pissed off when I tell this story because she doesn't want her kids watch. to know. No one no, no, she doesn't want her kids to know. And I said, well, that's my truth. And I'm not going to, I'm not lying. And I think that you forget everything that happened. So there were instances, like say, for example, she'd bring guys and friends over to do drugs. And I remember a time, because I blocked out a lot of it, but I have these little memories. And I remember a time I was in my room, I closed the door and she was banging on my door to get in to just annoy me. And I was just crying and crying and crying. So all, I have all these like small memories. And then um, fast forward to my, um, I guess, uh, uni. So I moved in with my dad uh, at that time. And then I, my sister was a fitness trainer. Then I didn't know anything about the gym. I didn't know anything about, you know, a treadmill equipment, how to do anything. But I saw the treadmill. I was like, okay, I'm going to hop on that. And then I couldn't even run. I was so unfit because I was just eating wow. like average like type food, like Indian curries, you know, KFC, Maccas, all that kind of thing. I, I walked on the treadmill and then I just thought, okay, I'll come back the next day, try again, try again, try again. I got up to doing 30, 45 minutes of just running straight. And that actually came into an obsession where I was running every single day for 60 minutes. 
Um, and then I was doing elliptical for 10 minutes, the roll for five minutes every single day. Then I started controlling what I was eating. I was eating a low fat, high carb diet, eating the same thing every single day. Well, to tell us what that diet looked like. Oh, okay. So the morning, okay. If you can think about a cereal box, mm -hmm. jumbo cereal box, I would finish that in three days. Okay. That was for breakfast. Um, and then I'd have that with milk. Then I'd go to the gym and I'd spend skim milk. I bet skim milk. Yeah. Yeah. Because my dad bought skim milk. Although I wasn't really fat phobic. I just ate a lot of um, carbs because I was yeah. running a lot. But then that actually caused me an injury later. Um, so then I, I would have cereal and then I'd go to the gym, come back. I'd have baked beans on toast. Then I would have four wheat bix with, with, with milk and brown sugar. Then in the, the wheat evening, wheat mix in the United States, like think the, of a the, pillow, like the fat wheat, yeah, like little it's a pillow wheat. Of yeah. wheat. Yeah, the shredded yeah. wheat, but it's like this, right? Like, yeah, but it's yeah. like a chunk. Four, yeah. four of them is a lot. Yeah, four of them with milk and sometimes some fruit. And then in the evening, I'd have like a big piece of like chicken that I'd cut into little pieces, put that on a flatbread, and put some sauce over it. I ate the same thing every single day for years. Would you be really Changed. hungry after the wheat bix, but before the chicken on on flatbread? I was so weak. I used to have an afternoon nap. I was I was hungry, but I was weak. Like I had to have a sleep every afternoon right. because I was exercising so much, and. Um, yeah, it wasn't, I mean, I didn't know that I was doing the wrong thing. I didn't even know where this diet came from. I just do something. I do the same thing over and over and that's me. Yeah. Right. And then um, I developed a eating disorder, which is called night eating syndrome. Go on. Yeah. What is this? Right. Nobody knows about this. So it is, it affects less than 5% of people, not even that, less than 1% of people worldwide. So basically what it is, you're sleeping in the night, you wake up, you go to the fridge and you start eating uncontrollably. Oh, I've heard, and you don't remember, you're doing it. right? Yeah, you have no idea. I've read about yeah. it. Not because yeah, of Ambien, yeah. you just do no, it. No, they you just, just do it. it. They have no And then you idea. wake up and then you feel like, shit, why did I do that? Why did I do that? And I was seeing psychologists, psychiatrists, and they put me on Zoloft. Um, you know, I said I had anxiety, depression, all these kind of things, because I didn't know why I was doing it which I later found was a self-soothing mechanism from my childhood trauma. I was protecting and comforting myself through, through eating. And I also wasn't eating the right thing. This is where, you know, Vinny and I talked about the nutrients in meat, eggs and seafood and, and, you know, veggies, uh, that gives your body nutrients. It feeds your hormones. And when you're eating shit, you're not going to be optimizing yourself to function well. And, so I don't think the night eating syndrome was just from eating carbs. It definitely was from the childhood trauma, but I had that for years and my weight would go up and down. If, if you can imagine, like there were times that I would have a bowl of pasta, not a small bowl, a big bowl of pasta. Cause my dad uh, would have leftovers. If he made a curry, I'd eat that. It wasn't specific to anything like, or like sugar or anything. It was just anything in the fridge I'll eat. Mm. Right. And wow. then. I became more obsessed with exercise. I exercised more. Wait, let me so ask could, a question here. To, you to control the yeah. physical stuff, but to control the emotions even more. If you exercise more, you if exercise I just exercise more, more harder, I'll yeah. feel better. Because by the way, I had massive body image issues. Sure. Massive. Yeah. And I was. Question. So you were an exercise bulimic. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was. Yeah. I was exercising a lot and I was obsessed with being 53 kilos, which is 100 and about 100 pounds. pounds. Yeah, 110. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know the exact. exact I'll, I'll figure it out. Keep talking. He'll do the so, math. So, yeah. So it's being obsessed with body image and that's coming from a lack of um, support and love from, you know, childhood, which again, very normal these days, but how it manifests into problems. And um, so that was, I, I, so when I had my interview with Vinny, I said, you changed my life. He goes, oh, no, 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 you didn't change my, oh, I didn't change your life. You changed your life. I said, no, you really changed my life. So I found you guys when I was 30. I didn't know anything about no sugars and no grains or keto or intermittent fasting. And then I tried it and then I, um, I got a lot of success from it. But again, it was very, um, 
I got obsessed with that kind of keto, keto cookies. And I was, and I had a lot of sugar addiction as well, not overeating sugar, like binging, but once I start, it's like something goes in my brain yeah. and I can't stop. Re Rena, did you say 53 or 63? 53. Okay. Because isn't it 2.2 .2 kilos? Or yeah, one, it's, it's, or no, it's, other way. it's just under one set. Yeah, one, 117. It's just under yeah. 117. Once yeah, and I'm eight. five foot eight, hun, yeah. five foot eight. So that's that's lean. -ish. Yeah, that, that's yeah. five eight. That's like Serena's height. But, yeah, you know, that's very lean. Yeah, yeah. That's thick thin. Yeah. I was very thin. Yeah, um, and I still am naturally thin, but I don't try. Like now, I mean, I'll talk about it later. But now, I don't even exercise all that much at all because I think it's just that relationship with exercise change. Cause when I see, when I exercise, I get this intense hunger and I eat more, which is okay. But I always have to battle the restrictive eating versus over exercising thing that's happened. So, um, so anyway, in my early thirties, I, yeah, did keto, uh, I guess, you know, all these labels keto, but it's high fat, low carb that worked really, really well. But I did have still an addiction towards like keto cookies, all these yeah. like keto the little so keto high. junk food things. Yeah, yeah. We talk about that not... a lot on the show. Yeah, and and it's everywhere now because now keto is having a moment. All the grocery store buyers are bringing stuff in. I always say like, if I had just invented a keto cracker instead of trying to sell sauce in the grocery stores here, yeah, I wouldn't be doing this podcast anymore. I'd be a rich woman. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But they, but for me, I mean, for other people, it's okay. But I'm just saying that for me, I can't have it. I can't have sugar. Yeah. I don't think people understand that. Well, we talk about it because we talk about net carbs and what BS it is, but I don't think people understand just how much excess processed food they're putting into their system, which is just completely fucking their hormones back to where they were to begin with, or at least at the very least causing them to stall out depending yeah, exactly. on where they are in the journey. Like if you don't have a lot to lose, you might not notice it so much, but if you have a lot to lose, it could mess with you. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, people don't understand the gravity of how much sugar is such an addiction. It's no different to meth, cocaine. It's just legalized. Yeah. You know? I was, Dr. Drew and I were arguing about it. He goes, well, you know, Sugar's not exactly like cocaine. I said, yeah, but Drew, we don't give cocaine to children at birthday parties and tell them it's okay. And he goes, you know, I never thought of it that way, but yeah. it's very true. One is, hey, kids, enjoy. And the other one is, oh, we know it's an illicit drug, you know? Yeah. And, it, you know, it's, it's that insidious that, you know, we really need to pay attention to what we're doing. And mind. most people don't really notice the effects of sugar because they, there's so many other things happening in their body, they're, they're drinking alcohol, maybe they smoke, maybe they eat fast food, you're not going to notice the effects of sugar. But I guarantee if you do an elimination diet, and then you put sugar back in, you'll be like, shit. Yeah, I feel, feel X, like Y, Z. Yeah. If you don't eat crap, if you're eating crap, you can't notice more crap coming in. Yeah. Oh, look, people tell me that all the time. You know, it, we, we yell about people taking Ozempic and uh, metformin. Sky Rizzi. Yes, yeah, Sky Rizzi. And then they, they go off of all these drugs and, you know, and they're eating right. And then they get angry. They go, why did my doctor just tell me this? Why, yeah. why did I have to learn this from you? Why is my doctor not telling me this? It's like, I don't know. I, 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 I can't. I have a theory. I have a new theory now after talking to people. I feel like the doctors don't necessarily mention it because they're so used to patients not complying with lifestyle changes that they've given up. But you see, Do you mean doctors, why they don't mention no sugars and no grains? Yeah. Why they're like, they go straight to the drugs. They're like, well, I'm going to tell you to cut uh, out processed sugars and grains, but you're not going to do it. So I'm going to do it. Take Sky Rizzi. But, but well, see, like that's a why, cynicism hey, why, within the whole medical. Anna, that's why people like Brian Linskis and, and Trocolasian and, and, Brett Shear and all these guys said, you know what, screw it. I can't be part of that anymore. I have to right. do my own thing. And there yeah. need to be more doctors like that, like Gary Fetke over in uh, where Rena lives. And yeah, you know, we need more doctors yeah. like that, like Tim Noakes, like Eric Westman. You know, we need yeah. more of these guys. There's not enough of them putting this Great. truth out there. 
Agreed. That's what I'm saying. There's a level of cynicism that's overcome the entire medical field. I mean, for a number of reasons. I know Drew talks about it a lot, but like, it's not just like, you know, they have to go in, they have the few minutes that, that, you know, why concierge medicine has become so popular, but really that's only access for well-to-do people to get that kind of treatment and that kind of attention. And, and uh, it's, but it's to be fair, I mean, I work with doctors. Um, I'm so I work for a biotech company and I see specialists. Um, but then I did work, I did sell pharmaceutical drugs. So I did see, we call them GP, so your local doctor. And to be fair, they do talk about diet, albeit it's for like a few minutes. And what they uh, promote is, you know, your your food pyramid, which is the grains and the sugars. They try down. and then they say, like even my mom, you know, she um, went, to, and this is why she was doing low carb and then she's trying to do it as much as possible. But she was getting pre-diabetic and my mom's like pretty healthy. Yeah. And so the doctor, the, a cardiologist actually said to her to eat a, you know, seafood, um, some, some eggs, you know, eat a healthy whole grains and all that kind of thing. A cardiologist. So Mediterranean. Oh, Mediterranean. When it has whole grains, but also fish, it's the Mediterranean. I, I literally yeah. just interviewed a cardiologist from Sydney and he was talking about the evidence of a Mediterranean diet. And I was just like, okay, I can't disagree with a cardiologist, especially because. You know, no, I was too scared. Cause <laughs> I don't blame like, you. I, I get no, he it. was like this. I was like, but you know what I did? Cause my father-in-law get, said he, his doctor told him to go on the Mediterranean diet. And I told my father-in-law, I was like, great, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the Mediterranean diet. Absolutely. You're going to do Mediterranean diet. You're just going to not have the whole grains part. And he was like, oh, okay. And also add in some red meat. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I just started, uh, I actually, like, I actually I started just like completely yeah. finessing it. <laughs> yeah. You know it's what I mean? It's not the Mediterranean diet. It's, it's no diet. It's no diet. It's yeah. like so, you know, like something that's so stupidly simple that people want to overcomplicate with yeah. everything in life, everything yeah. in life. And like how does, even I did it in, in my brain because you you kind of believe these things that you're being told. Magazines, like even Vinny was saying that when he first started, he, he had all these magazines and what they were tooting to him was doing, you know, this diet, get abs, get a sexy butt. And even with, with women, they go to the gym and what do they do? They do butt exercises and ab exercises to get a cute butt and abs. Yeah. yeah. Spot yeah. reduction doesn't work. Which we, which we all know doesn't work. Yeah, they still. Well, yeah. Hey, I think Anna, people are still wait. hoping. Anna, we got to do an ad. I need to run for a second. Do it. Okay, ad. I'm going to do this. Talk we were just talking about the med- right Mediterranean diet and the best Mediterranean diet starts <laughs> with, first of all, NSNG, second of all, with Villa Capelli olive oil. The, I'm sorry. I don't think you can get Villa Capelli where you are. It's okay. No, it is such good olive oil in Australia. And and here's the thing that people don't understand. When I first went to stay at the property in 2011, I met Paul Capelli and he was like, you know, they're cutting your stuff over there. And I was like, this guy, he's a, you know, a number one pitch man. He owned an ad agency. I was like, he's BSing me to get me to buy his damn oil. And then I tried it and I was like, that's the most flavorful olive oil I've ever had. And that's because I had not had the good stuff. I had had the grocery store stuff that was always cut. Then a couple months later, I was listening to an interview on Fresh Air with Terry Gross. And this author was talking about his book. And turns out it was Tom Mueller or Muller. I don't know how he says his name. And he wrote a book called Extra Virginity, The Sublime and Scandal of the Olive Oil World. And he just talked all about all the food fraud that was rampant. And in the US, the FDA, the FDA basically turns a blind eye and yeah. lets companies cut the oil with seed oils. And they can put ah, it in so the Mm-hmm. That's what I was going to ask, but you're doing an ad, so I wasn't sure if I could no, ask no, It's fine. It's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. like I, th- I think people don't understand like when we say these things like cut, cutting the oil, even I don't understand what does that mean, cutting the oil with with seed oils. Why? With seed oils. They're, they're diluting the oil to make a bigger right. profit, number one. Right. Number so two, you're not getting the quality. Even the oil that they are, they do have, let's say it's gone rancid because oil is something, olive oil is something, they always say drink older wines, drink younger oil, Right. Right. So the oil can go rancid if it's exposed to sunlight, if it's exposed to the air, if it's oxidized, they will put in chemicals, deodorizers, chlorophyll to color it, to make it look, and they will make it so that they can sell their old oil to you on the grocery store shelves, cut with a thing. Mm. If you see Mark, there's a lot of marketing speak like light olive oil. Look at this. Yeah. So what is the difference? Well, they've cut it with something else. 
It's a very light color. They're letting you say, oh, it's fewer calories or it's, it's not. It's just they've cut it with a cheaper seed oil, which generally is very light in color because it's very refined. Got it. So olive oil, it can sometimes be golden in color. It can range all the way to green in color. Villa Capelli is the, their sponsor of this podcast. We were drinking it on the air long before they were ever sponsors. But Paul said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pay you guys. You, you used to drink it in a little like shot. Yeah. I have little tulip glasses that I used to use. Yeah, for limoncello. I remember. But now that. I don't drink limoncello anymore. Just all that of them. was ages ago. I was eight. I was you're listening. you're old yeah. school, girl. I love I'm, it. No, no. Like when I was talking to Vinny, I was saying, yeah, like, I probably um like I found you guys on like ten years ago, and I was like, was it ten years ago? Because yeah. that's showing my age. But then he said, yeah, like that's when we kind of started around that time. Yeah. And you guys were just talking about NSNG, talking about the olive oil. And I remember you used to drink it. And yeah. I actually had you guys on, on my phone and I would listen to you guys like in the morning and get ready. And I would just laugh. It was hilarious. And I was still learning. And that's how I wanted to try like NSNG or, you know, the intermittent fasting. But I remember the olive oil it was hilarious. Yeah. And it's still to this day. I do shots of it. You still drink um, it. We do. Use a disc. If really? you guys want to get it, let me just get the ad part out. If you guys want to get it, get the, use it, get it, drink it, p- rub it all over your hair. I don't know what you're going to do with it. Have an Olive oil, oil is really good for your hair and it's a good face mask as well. It's like the say it's pure. It yeah. also could be good lube. I don't know. Whatever I, you guys I, do. Heard, you. I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> Whatever. It, yeah. Hair. Wh- it's whichever multifunctional. <laughs> it yeah. is. Multifunctional. It's, Anna, it's, are you at lube stage? At lube. <laughs> When have I not been at lube stage? Anyway, use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, not with a wimpy Y. You will get 10% off your order each and every time. Go to villacapelli.com, use the discount code Vinny. They also sell great salts and uh, herbs and stuff there. So g- grab that stuff. It's amazing, high quality. And Paul is now no longer with us. His husband, his widower, Stephen, is carrying the torch that in gay world it, it, Wid- widower widower oh yeah yeah oh, he yeah. husband so they were married they no, were married yeah. oh that's yeah. oh that recently became legalized in australia it wasn't yeah. even legal for a long time wow luckily yeah. they got married right after it became legal in italy because he passed away shortly thereafter but oh. um yeah but steven's still there running the running the villa and you can go stay there too i wish now that everything's opening back up i highly highly recommend by the way, there's a quirky show that we watched. There was six episodes, <clears throat> Australian show called The Tourist. I don't know if you've seen it. It's like on Netflix or Hulu or one of those. Maybe Apple. Recently or? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we just finished watching Gotta write it. that one down. Ah. Tourist. It's quirky, Anna. It was good enough. By the way, there's a new sitcom. Don Rio, you know, the, the great sip, sitcom guy in, in this country. Don Rio's got one out. It stars, I'm not kidding, Aston Kutcher and Sam Elliott and um, Deborah Winger is in it. Oh, well, it, actually, it, what's it, it called? She's so cute. It's oh, on Netflix. Goodness. So it's kind of weird when you see Sam Elliott and he does Sam Elliott. And then there's a laugh track behind him. It throws you for the first episode or two. But Sam they, Elliott. You had me at Sam Elliott. And then you really had me at Sam Elliott plus laugh track. I'm, I'm into it. it. It's like I, I, I went, oh, Sam Elliott's in a Western and it's called something. I can't remember what it's called. But at any rate, um, I started watching. And I'm like, what about Don Rio produced this? Because he, he's a big sitcom guy in this country. And I'm like, OK. And I start watching and they, they do a couple of lines and they say a couple of things. And all of a sudden there's a laugh track. And I'm like, wait, what? Wait, this is a sitcom on Netflix. Wait, what's it called again? You got to find out and you got to text me. I got to find out. We just you, started that we crash thing and that guy is insane. I, I got to find out. I don't watch Leto. anything. Like, so I don't own a TV. I don't have Netflix. I have, I'm out of the loop. Everyone talks about all these shows and everything. I'm like, oh, okay. Right here. I, I don't watch anything. Oh, I, I mostly just watch trash TV, like all the housewives, which by the way, you guys had the real housewives of Melbourne, which was the best franchise. Really? Of housewives. Oh, okay. Hands down. Those bitches were nuts. I love them. Love them. And that Melbourne accent was really harsh, darling. It's, like, called, it was it, it, it's, called, the, it's called The Ranch. And it's on the Ranch. Okay, great. And I don't know if I'm going to keep watching. I saw maybe five or six episodes because I was half drugged from, I had a little surgery the other day, Rena. Uh-huh. And um, I, I was half drugged from the surgery. So I'm sitting there watching it and I can't move. So I was just on a couch. <laughs> so I watched four or five episodes and I'm like, I wonder if I like it because 
I'm just coming because out. Because you're high? Or, yeah, I'm still halfway high from surgery or what? And, uh, but yeah, the ranch, Sam um, Ashton Kutcher, Deborah Winger. Vinny, I know we have to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. Rena, I want to know where people can find you because I am a fan of your YouTube channel. Is that the best place to send people? Yes. So my YouTube channel is the five, it's, it's five minute body. Like the number and five or F I V E? The number five. And the then minute, minute body. body. Right. Great. Yes. So that that's where I hang out mostly and on Instagram as well. And I also, um, I have a free fitness program and I am writing a book as well, which Great. is fun. It's very, yeah. it is very, uh, I always say any demons that you have will be uh, exercised as you write your book. And then yeah. it will happen all over again when you release your book. <laughs> Really? <laughs> it's oh very interesting. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey of self-discovery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just ride it like every morning, like just 30 right. minutes or 20 minutes. And it's amazing that the time just goes so fast and you just uncover so many things, especially when you're talking about your own history. And it's kind of like therapy a bit. That's great. Oh, that, well, Vinny, have you read Vinny's book, Fitness Confidential? I haven't yet, but I don't amazing. read things. I have to listen to it because oh, um, I, I love it. I love Audible and audiobooks, but yeah, I need to listen to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's something else. Um, it, I wrote a book as if no one would ever read it. You know how they say dance like no one's looking? I wrote a book that no one would ever read, and then everyone read it. Now we talk um, as if no one's listening. Yeah. Well, that's the easier thing because then you're authentic, right? Like if you're actually trying to write or do something because someone's going to see it or maybe they like it, People aren't going to connect to it unless you're a really good con artist, like those really good con artists. It doesn't happen. But if you're just, you know, talking and you learn and then, you know, if, if it's helping people, people will generally like it. Rena, what's your name on uh, on Instagram? I'm looking right now. It's not coming uh, Five Minute Body. Number five okay, Minute Body. Um, Vinny, did you get your spices yet in the mail? No. Damn. But I, to, be on, to be honest, I haven't. Okay, you know, it should I'm, come I'm any minute now. We're looking up five minute body. Five minute body. Here we let's see. There you are. Okay, great. Have you seen it? No, this is my. I, I'm gonna. What do I do? I, I, you're following me, so I'm gonna follow you back. I followed so you. I'm, yeah. I thank you. So I'm new. Well, I'm I'm not new to Instagram, but you know, it's a whole different. It's a whole different thing because because when i started my youtube i just started like doing fitness videos because i was so shy and i didn't want to talk and um i eventually got my confidence around you know talking to the camera and I actually changed my camera to using my my phone which was easier to connect um with you know the other person who, who would be watching it but now with instagram i have to learn instagram and you know Oh, uh, it's, it's don't awesome. even get us started on having to learn a oh, new. I don't want to like jump and go. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, that that that's so last month. You don't have to do that. No, yeah, outfit. and then like oh, we're crazy. Yeah. No. Um, speaking of Vinny, we need to do another Q and A soon. The people did like that. Oh, they did. Okay, yeah. well, let's do it uh, next week. Okay, we'll Remind do it. Well, that, this comes out Monday. Good. We'll figure out maybe on Wednesday. Yeah, we'll figure so, something out. Pay attention to your Instagram. Like and subscribe. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's do, just do. A, smash that like button, you guys. Like, okay. subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Everyone's been asking us, can you guys do another Q&A? <laughs> Thousands of people have been wondering. Yeah, everybody wants. Everybody um, says. All right, I'm, uh, hang with us. Right, we're done. We're, we're let, good. Let's turn off. We got to thank you for off. being here. Rita, don't oh, it's my pleasure. You thank back, you. I like talking to you. All right, wait, let me do all this first um, before I turn off. We turn oh, off yeah. YouTube before we turn off the podcast. So, folks, if you like what's going on here, Anna Vocino has a lot of stuff. She's sure. got two books, Eat Happy, Eat Happy too. She's got not only gravies, some people call them sauces. She also has rubs. And she, by the way, you want to make it and rubs. You know, they say, how do you get a girl to blow you in the Midwest? Gravy. You put ranch on it. That's right. Oh! She's, got ranch. <laughs> She's got ranch. How did I not know that joke? You never heard that? <laughs> no. Yeah. You want to get a girl to blow you in the Midwest? That sounds put like it would work. It. 
get Anna's ranch because it's look, spicy, if you, oh, dude, spicing you, it up. You don't want to, um, you don't want to get, you know, seed oils in there. You just want to oh. get it done right. You don't want high so, fructose corn syrup involved. Oh, God, nice no. Shit is. No you grain. want a oh. good, clean blowjob there. So get yeah. Anna's stuff. Um, go do that. That's all at um, eathappykitchen.com. Yes, thank um, you. For me, you know what to do. Uh, first, you go to vinnytartarus.com. Before you go to Amazon, it puts a little cold on the fire. It gets my train down the track. Keeps this show free for a gazillion years in a row. If you're that one person who don't shop on Amazon, we also have a super fan page. I do appreciate everyone going there to do that. Go check out Five Minute Body over yes. at um, Instagram. Five Minute Body. What's it called, Rena, on um, YouTube? Five Minute Body also? Five Minute yes. Body. Five Minute Body. Folks, you want a body in five minutes, go right over and check Rena out. Well, it's Mastering Health with Daily Micro Habits. So it's Here five things. Now it's more. Because <laughs> when people five think minutes. five minute body, they think, oh, exercise for five minutes. Just no, five no, minutes. no, no, that's not what it is. Little, no, exercise does not work to transform your health. So, exactly. There's other things that are important. You cannot outrun a bad diet. So, go check all that out. We're going to cut.